Today we'll be showing you how to properly service an SKF HC Dual Turbo 2000 air dryer using one of our service kits. Now let's go over what comes in the service kit. You'll be receiving two desiccant cartridges, filters, stud O-rings, unloader valves with new screens, the necessary O-rings and two lineup dowels, inlet check valves with the necessary O-rings, housing bolts, a new heater element with the pigtail, safety valve, and check valve. We're gonna go ahead and start disassembling our air dryer. First thing we're gonna do is take off our cartridges. Now using a strap wrench, put it around the cartridge, snug it up, and with a little bit of force, it will come out. And you can go ahead and spin it off. And then you'll be doing the same on the other side. Next, we're going to go ahead and remove our stud O-rings and the filters. Now, if you see that the studs are loose, any one of the studs are loose, you're going to need to replace the plate on this. So now we're going to go ahead and remove that stud O-ring and the filter. And again, the same on the other side. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove the check valve which is inside, taking off the nut. Remove the nut and then inside you'll see the spring, the spindle, and the ball. And you'll be discarding all of it. Flip the dryer over and you can get the ball out. Now we're going to go ahead and remove our crossover tube. And what I would like to do before I remove the actual fittings on here is what I do is I'll actually mark it to know the direction and which fitting goes on which side. You'll notice right here I have a T and on this side I have an upside down L basically pointing into that direction. Push back on the gray lock and slide the tube outward. Same on both sides. And then take a wrench and remove the brass fittings on both sides. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove the heater. Two Phillips screws on this one. Now we'll pull out the heater element and the foam insulator. Next we'll remove the plate Allen bolts. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove the unloader valve and the inlet valve. By taking off the retainer plates, remove the bolts. Remove the valve and then inside you'll be able to see a screen and an O-ring. Remove the screen and the O-ring and then replace it. And the screen and the O-ring does come in the kit. Pop the cover out. And remove the inlet check valve. And now we're gonna repeat that same procedure on the other side. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove the 12 housing bolts. Now we're going to go ahead and remove the housing from the plate. Now you'll notice yet we have our oil separators and the gaskets on there. So remember to take those off, throw them out because you'll be getting new ones in the kit. Also remove the O-rings on the housing. 
and always inspect inside the plate and the housing if for any type of oil or debris. You always want to clean it up before you start putting it back together. Finally, remove the safety valve. Now we're going to go ahead and reassemble our air dryer. And the first thing we're going to do is install our new safety valve that came in the kit. Next, we're going to go ahead and put our oil separator in. Now, you'll see that the filter material side will be actually going into the plate. And it'll look like this. And then you'll go ahead and install your gasket with the notches right there. And then you'll have your O-ring, which is on your housing. Go ahead and install your O-ring on the housing. And then you'll repeat the same procedure on this side here. Now that we have everything together in here, we're going to go ahead and put the housing right on the plate. Now you're going to go ahead and install your housing bolts and making sure that you torque them down to 25 to 30 foot-pounds. So now we're doing our final torque here, getting it up to about 30 foot-pounds. Now we're going to go ahead and install our valves. On this side, we have our unloader valve. And on this side, we have our inlet valve. Now, on the unloader valve, first thing we want to do is put our new screen in. Next, we're going to go ahead and put the O-ring. Then we're going to go ahead and install the unloader valve. And we're going to take the unloader valve, and you'll notice on the valve there's one hole. Now, that hole faces downward. As you can see, my finger coming through that hole. That hole will need to face the other hole going through. So you can take the air dryer, flip it, and if you notice, we're not lined up on that hole. So what you do is you take your dowel rod, line it up. Now we've gone ahead and replaced all the O-rings on the retainer that come in the kit. And go ahead and start putting your retainer on. Now, of course, in the kit, you do have the silicone grease that we do uh, supply in the kit. Lube up all the O-rings. And then you'll feel it pop in. And then you can put your retaining bolts in. And torque the retaining bolts down to 10 to 15 foot-pounds. Now we're going to go ahead and install our new inlet valve. And of course, with the silicone provided, we're going to lubricate these O-rings. Take the valve. You'll hear it snap right in there. And again, with the new O-rings installed on the retaining cap, put it right in there. Take your retaining bolts and torque these down to 10 to 15 foot-pounds. Now we've gone ahead and installed the four Allen head housing bolts. And remember, your torque on this is also 25 to 30 foot-pounds. Now we're going to go ahead and install our heater element. First thing we're going to do is take our gasket, install the gasket onto the heater element. Then take the Never Seize, which is supplied in the kit. Apply a nice generous amount on the heater. And then what you want to do is take your foam insulator, lay it inside the housing. And then take the heater element, put it into the body of the hole, and then making sure you don't damage the thermostat. Push your heater element in. Then taking the two new screws supplied to you in the kit. Also included in the kit is a pigtail for your heater element. Now, if you see that the truck's heater element uh, pigtail wire is wore out, or corroded, one is supplied in the kit for you. So 
if you need to replace it, go ahead and replace it. It is supplied for you. Next, we're going to go ahead and install our fittings. And as you remember, we did mark the fittings on the direction in which one goes where. So you can see the T fitting here goes this way. And what I also did is I added some Teflon tape for sealing. Next, we're going to go ahead and install the crossover tube. Now again, just take that tube, pop it in one side. Pop it in the other side. Make sure it's locked into place. Now we're going to go ahead and install our check valve. We have the new ball, new spindle, and new spring. And of course in the kit comes with a new o-ring which you've already lubricated. And now we're going to screw it onto the manifold. Now we're going to go ahead and install our filters and our o-rings. Now always remember with this o-ring and the other ones, make sure that you do put a generous amount of uh, silicone grease. Now we're ready to install our desiccant cartridges. Now on the cartridge you'll notice the O-ring. Included in the service kit again is the silicone grease. Make sure you lubricate the O-rings very well with a generous amount of the silicone. Screw the filter onto the dryer. And then once the gasket makes contact all you need is half a turn. And repeat the same procedure with the other side. Now that completes the service on our SKF HC Dual Turbo 2000. And remember, when you're reinstalling the air dryer back on the vehicle, make sure you check for any type of air leaks. For more product info, visit skfpartsinfo.com or follow us on Twitter at skf. Parts Info.